John Stewart doesn't care about the truth. It's all about me, 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 John Stewart. Look at me, I'm on TV. That's Rand Paul, making fun of John Stewart, who selflessly walked away from a career helming one of the most critically acclaimed TV shows in history to go help out 9-11 first responders. Randall Howard Paul was born in 1963 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. His dad is the three-time failed presidential candidate Ron Paul. His mom is Carol, who hasn't run for anything yet. In 1981, Rand attended Baylor University in Waco, Texas, the largest Baptist university in the country. He was part of a secret society on campus known as the Nosy Brotherhood, a satirical newsletter like The Onion, if The Onion was unfunny and racist. In one newsletter, there's a joke about a chimpanzee giving birth to a person of color. In another piece, the newsletter claimed Latino culture is taking over Anglo-Saxon values. First Mexican food, then Mexican dresses, and now Latin lifestyle is overrunning the established Anglo-Saxon ideals. Another nosy brotherhood joke seemingly got out of hand when Rand was alleged to have kidnapped a woman who he blindfolded, tried to force her into taking bong hits, and then took her to a creek to worship it as the Aqua Buddha. How did, how did Aqua get attached to Buddha in these college pranks? Because I find it hilarious. It's like stuff we did at the Dartmouth Review. I mean, it's just insane. No, I love it. I, you know, I wish I had a great story about it, but I don't really remember anything about this story. A member of the Nosy Brotherhood, William John Green, recalls, Randy smoked pot. He made fun of Baptists. None of us ever heard him pontificating about religion. Rand left Baylor before graduating. He went on to Duke Medical School, where he got an MD in 1988. After finishing his residency in 1993, he started his own practice specializing in eye surgery. As an eye surgeon, uh, uh, what's your take on Donald Trump? Well, you know, Larry, have you ever had a speck of dirt fly into your eye? All the while, Rand was dipping in and out of his father's libertarian-centric and anti-establishment campaigns. In 1996, Rand helped steer his father to winning an election in Texas's 14th congressional district after what should have been a career-ending news broke. Four years earlier, the elder Paul wrote and sold an explicitly racist newsletter, which was dug up in the campaign. One entry said, We are constantly told that it is evil to be afraid of black men. It is hardly irrational. Black men commit murders, rapes, robberies, muggings, and burglaries all out of proportion to their numbers. Despite the open bigotry, and with the help of Rand's electioneering efforts, Ron won. Later, Rand helped his dad when he decided to run for president in 2008. Ron didn't win, but Rand gained enough notoriety to slither into the spotlight. And in 2009, Rand Paul decided to run for U.S. Senate. But if he wanted to win, he'd need help from some of the best and most trustworthy news sources, like famed radio screamer, Alex Jones. What can they do today uh, to make sure you make that right decision to run for Senate out of Kentucky? Well, I told you earlier, Alex, last time I was on your show, your listeners shut down my website because they overdid it. We had to buy a bigger server. Rand seemingly gained enough support from the InfoWars crowd to win the vacant Kentucky Senate seat. Even after winning, he popped up on InfoWars. Senator, are you there? I am, Alex. Thanks for having me. While Alex Jones would go on to claim the Sandy Hook massacre was a total hoax, Rand went on to question whether or not he would have voted for the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Paul took an issue with Title II of the Act, which prohibits discrimination based on race, color, or religion in public places, like restaurants. Paul seemingly would have tweaked that section to continue allowing private businesses to post Blacks Not Served Here signs. What about freedom of speech? Should we limit speech from people we find abhorrent? Should we limit racist from speaking? Paul, a self-described libertarian, holds some views the left would possibly support. He's fairly lax on marijuana issues and believes you shouldn't be locked up for possessing it. It's unclear if the alleged kidnapping he may have committed in college, where he later attempted to make the victim take bong hits, influenced this policy decision. What is clear is that he has a good record on criminal justice issues, like pushing to restore voting rights to felons and working to expunge nonviolent felonies from criminal records. But that's about where his aisle reaching ends. He also spews a ton of positions the left abhors. In the Senate, Rand has consistently voted against gun control measures. Perhaps most notably, he voted no on banning high capacity magazines of over 10 bullets. I don't mind making other people uncomfortable if it's in the defense of liberty. He's voted to defund Planned Parenthood and believes the science behind the climate crisis is not conclusive. Somebody tell me what 100 years data is in an Earth that's 4.6 billion years old. My guess is that the conclusions that you make from that are not conclusive.
Bizarrely, in 2013, Rand spoke in support of Virginia gubernatorial candidate Ken Cuccinelli. Rachel Maddow pointed out that Rand had plagiarized part of his speech from Wikipedia. What he plagiarized, you ask? Wikipedia's page on the 1997 sci-fi movie Gattaca starring Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke. In the movie Gattaca, the not-too-distant future, but copy and pasting a sci-fi movie wiki entry to argue what could have happened if you supported pro-choice policies didn't seem to slow Rand down, because in 2016 he ran for president, where he was slowed down by a former steak salesman. His visceral response to attack people on their appearance, short, tall, fat, ugly, my goodness, that happened in junior high. I never attacked him on his look, and believe me, there's plenty of subject matter right there. Rand, of course, didn't win. He went back to the Senate, where he somehow went from a never-Trumper... Donald Trump is a delusional narcissist and an orange-faced windbag... ...to a Trump lapdog. I consider President Trump a friend. I support him often and continue to defend him against the ongoing witch hunts that the Democrats have launched. Surprisingly, what Rand is most famous for isn't his newfound love for Trump, nor the very classy Beats by Dre headphone skins he sold on his campaign website. Rand is known for blocking the 9-11 Victims' Compensation Fund, which was a bill that guaranteed 9-11 first responders who faced health problems after the attacks compensation for their economic losses and medical costs. But until then, I will object. The bill eventually passed 97-2. to two. Mike Lee and Rand Paul were the only two, some may describe as spineless senators, who voted in opposition. Rand pointed to the national debt as his reasoning. It has long been my feeling that we need to address our massive debt in this country. Rand's sudden and extremely abrupt shift to what John Stewart calls fiscal responsibility virtue signaling is interesting considering that just two years prior, Rand voted for the Senate tax bill, a massive tax cut for the richest families and the biggest corporations. His vote for this tax cut will add over $1 trillion to the deficit. Vanity Fair points out, apparently, when it comes to making exceptions to his faux principles, 9-11 victims dying of cancer don't make the cut. Paul isn't up for re-election until 2023, and it's unclear what decisions he'll make from here, but there's one he'll have to live with forever. Politics is sometimes the art of removing your soul, and they remove people's ability to do the right thing for causes that have nothing to do with what the needs are of the people, and they do it really well.